Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, before I get started into this video, I just want to say welcome and thank you for subscribing to all my new subscribers. I appreciate you. Um, it's crazy what a mention of my name on Simon's channel can do. <laughs> um, so I also appreciate Simon over at Savage Reads. Um, he is a very generous person and one of the biggest supporters of um, small content creators that I know. So thank you, Simon, as well. And now it's starting to rain. Hopefully it's not going to be too heavy. Um, so I'm filming this video so soon after my um, wrap up that I just posted because I wanted to join in on the Pride Month discussions um, in the world of literature, obviously. Um, so yeah, excuse the sporadic uploads. It was intentional. Um, but yeah, so today I want to talk about, um, I'm not going to do a TBR for this month because I read uh, a lot of queer fiction as it is already. Um, so what I wanted to do was just um, recommend some queer books that I've loved over the years and also talk about some that are on my TBR for the near and distant future. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. The first one is, um, we'll start with fiction, The Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay. This was one of my favourite books um, of the year that I read it. I can't remember when that was because it was a few years ago now. But um, basically it is about Yale Tishman who is um, some type of art dealer. Um, and he is surrounded by a group of friends who are there at the start of the AIDS crisis and don't realise that they're going to be affected by the AIDS crisis. So we're following that story and we're also following a separate story who... By memory, I want to say that it's Yale's sister. Like I said, it's been a while since I've read this, but um, she is on a journey to find her daughter that's gone missing. Um, she left and moved countries, and she's um, involved in some stuff that she shouldn't be involved in. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic story. I loved it so much. It's, um, yeah, it's just got so much in this book. I mean, it is not a short book but it's also not a huge book um but just the amount of events and the descriptions on the characters and the the way that the characters and their stories and their backgrounds and their careers and their involvement with culture and their um society is just so fully fleshed and well done um so that's a highly highly recommended book for me I'm worried that this rain is going to be too loud and you're not going to be able to hear me. Um, next up is this. <laughs> um, this is De Profundis by, um, oh, I forgot the name, Oscar Wilde. Wow. Um, and this is a letter that he wrote to his lover as he was in prison um, for crimes of being queer at a time when you were not allowed to be a queer person. Um, and it's fantastic. I don't want to talk about too much about what happens or what is said in the letter, because I think that's just for you to discover. Um, but yeah, I really loved it, and it's a very short read, um, so it comes highly recommended by me as well. Sorry, I had to cut. The rain is getting very, very loud, and um, I just had to check that you could actually hear what I was saying. All right, next up is a book that I had just finished, and that is James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room. This is about um, David and his um, girlfriend, who he proposes to at the start of the novel, and she goes away to Spain to find herself before she decides. Um, and in the meantime, he meets Giovanni, who is a queer man, and they form a relationship that David didn't know um, he could form with a man. He's bisexual, but just coming to terms with the fact. And it was fantastic. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. The ending was very dramatic, and um, the depiction of a person who is still finding himself in his adulthood um, was fantastic, and I really, really, really enjoyed that as well. Um, and again, a very short book. Next up is definitely not a short book and probably the most popular queer book in the world. Um, and that is A Little Life by Hane Yanagihara. I couldn't not mention this. Um, I have really, really fond memories of my reading experience with this. I think, I don't even think I ended up giving it a five star reading, uh, rating, but to my reading experience, I would give it a five star, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I loved this book. It's just about a group of characters, um, four men who moved to New York, all about to start on their journeys of adulthood and careers paths, careers paths. Um, and it goes into 
depth on most of their lives, but mostly a man named Jude, who is um, a disabled man who has received a lot of torture and a lot of trauma through his life, um, almost to the point where it's unbelievable, which is a lot of what a lot of people say, but I don't think that's up to us to say that it's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic. So sad, obviously, um, as you can imagine, um, but so detailed in the friendships and the connections that these characters are making. Um, and yeah, I adored this book. I'm whizzing past these because I also have a lot of books that I want to read as well. Next up is another recent read, and that is Hannah Kent, Hannah Kent's Devotion. Um, I loved this book so much. If um, any of you haven't read it yet, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a beautiful story of um, a young girl named Hannah, and she is um, living in Prussia, and she's about to migrate to South Australia. Um, but just before they migrate, she meets a young girl, and um, they quickly become really close and form um, a bond a little bit stronger than friendship. Um, and when it is announced that they're going to migrate, they're really worried that they're not going to be on the same boat and they're going to end up in different parts of Australia. But they end up on the same boat, uh, but then something, something happens on that boat which changes the course of their lives. Um, and it's a fantastic, fantastic book. Um, her writing in South Australia especially, um, because it's where I'm from, I just, I think I had a much higher appreciation of that because I could just see the places that she was talking about. Um, and it's also really fascinating because what I didn't, obviously, I, when they migrated, there was no such thing as cars. Um, so there was, you know, a lot of walking from, you know, a suburb that was, is quite near me at the moment where I'm living to something that's way up in the hills that would I would imagine would take days and days to walk um, but they would have to make these journeys and it was really fascinating to learn about that as well um, but other than that it's just a great exploration on queer love in a time when queer love wasn't really um, accepted and there's something that happens at the end that turns it into this really beautiful metaphor on that disconnect between um, two people that can't be together, that really, really want to be together. And I really, 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 really loved this book. It was incredible. Next up is um, a book I really, really, I really, really, I really remember loving, but I'm a little bit foggy on some of the essays that are included now. Um, but I'm going to mention it anyway, because I liked my reading experience of it. That is Queer Intentions, um, A Personal Journey Through LGBTQ Plus Culture. And basically, Amelia Abraham is just on this journey um, to talk to a whole bunch of different people about queerness and their involvement in queer culture um, and in queer society and it was fantastic. There's a lot on um, the repression on um, queerness and some places in the world where you know you're not even allowed a pride march um, and when that is where that is really really heavily enforced um, and it was quite terrifying in some parts, but it was also really, really um, beautifully written at the same time. And the people that she talked to, um, you could tell she really, really cared about their stories. Um, so I really recommend that as well. <coughs> Next up, I won't talk about too much. Sorry, I keep making throat noises, by the way. I can't help it. I've, like I said, um, I think I, did I say at the start of this video, I've been a little bit poorly. Um, it's not COVID. I've taken two tests and it's come back negative, it's just a bit of a dry coffee throat. Um, anyway, I don't want to talk about this book for too long because I've just raved about it in my recent um, wrap up, but it is Shruggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. I just couldn't not include this book. Um, it would feel like a crime. Um, but yeah, really love this book. It's about a young boy growing up in Glasgow with an alcoholic mother and a distant father. Um, and him trying to find his way around that and while at the same time being a queer little boy receiving a lot of um, bullying um, and torment around that um, and it's all about who he is as a young boy and who that turns him into as an adult um, fantastic book fantastic and yeah like I said that was very brief because I just felt like I had to include it all right so next up is Tin Man by Sarah Women um, I read this a really long time ago, and in fact, I think it's due for a reread for me because I'm a little bit foggy on the story, but again, I remember adoring this story. Um, 
this is about I've forgotten their names, Ellis and Michael, who um, are both I believe queer men, um, and they form a connection. But at the same time, I think one of them is bisexual, so there's a bit of a connection with a woman named Annie as well. Um, and basically, they're all just really close, and um, there's a little bit of confusion in that whole kind of love triangle situation. But it also explores themes of AIDS as well, and it's set in if my memory serves me right, in the UK somewhere, and also Paris. Um, and yeah, I just, I cried a lot in this book, and it's a short book, and it's very accessible, and a beautiful story, and I do plan on rereading that one, um, hopefully pretty soon. Next up, I have two books by Philippe Besson. I never know if I'm saying his name right. Um, it's the two Ps that throw me off. Um, the first one is In the Absence of Men, this one is set in um, Paris as all of the men have gone away to war and we follow a young boy named Vincent, that's right, um, as he's trying to, you know, entertain himself and find something to do when um, a lot of people he knows are away. Um, and then we follow him meeting Marcel Proust, the famous author, and they form a connection. There's a bit of a, there's a bit more than a fond friendship forming from the side of Marcel Proust, but he respects that obviously this is a young kid. And basically he um, just wants to have lunches with him and dinners and get to know this um, young Vincent, um, which is un problematic, but um, nothing problematic actually happens. Um, but then we also meet um, a soldier that has just returned from the war who Vincent falls in love with, but that soldier is um, has experienced a lot of trauma in the war and is only back for a week on some leave and he's dealing with the fact that he will have to return and that the um, relationship that he's forming with Vincent is only temporary but he wants it to last forever and he's also going to miss his mum who is um, going dealing with a lot of grief um, over the idea of losing her son, which um, they feel is inevitable at the moment. Um, and it's fantastic. I loved this book. Philip Besson just has um, a great talent in making me weep. <laughs> um, all the, both, both of these books are just incredibly, incredibly sad, and but also beautifully written. Um, and yeah, I couldn't recommend them enough. Um, the same with Lie With Me um, by... Philip Besson as well. Surely I should say who these are translated by. This one is translated by Molly Ringwald and this one is translated by Frank Wynne. Um, this one tells the story of a man who sees another man in a cafe and is reminded about a past love and then we go into their relationship. And I think this is the book that has made me cry the most I've ever cried in my life. Um, you know, and I've experienced some trauma myself in my life and this is probably the most I've ever cried. Um, it was such a tenderly told story um, and so fantastic and again it explores you know the idea of people that really want to be together but for some and multiple reasons they can't um, and yeah it's fantastic. I'm being a little bit vague with these because they are both very short books and I feel like discovery is a part of um, what really uh, makes them a special book. All right, so moving on to the books that I plan to read in the near and distant future. The first up is Ian Forster um, and his book Maurice. This is about a um, man called Maurice in the 1914 Britain. And he is coming to terms with his sexuality and meeting people that also identify the same. Um, and it's just all about the repressive state of um, the UK in the 1914 in the 1914, in the early 1900s, my god. Um, yeah, really, really excited about this book. I think, if I remember correctly, I'm supposed to be buddy reading this with Simon at some point over at Savage Reads. Um, sorry, I really try to say the full name of a channel because I really get annoyed when people just refer to channels as their first names, like we're all supposed to know who they're talking about. Um, but yeah, if I remember that correctly, Simon, and you're still interested, even though we already have a buddy read planned, I am still interested in buddy reading this because I also really want to read Alec, um, which is a new book coming out by an author whose name I've forgotten at the moment. Um, but basically it follows on the story of Maurice, but from a different 
perspective. Um, so yeah, very excited about that one. Next up is The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. Um, this is a lesbian story and one I know little about actually. Um, so this one says, Stephen Gordon is born in an arist aristocratic English family, spending early years at the family estate Morton Hall. Above all, she loves riding horses with her father, but as she grows up, Stefan is uncomfortable at society, at society gatherings, where the local gentry judge her to be unattractively mannish. After a love affair embroils her in scandal, Stefan flees to Paris, where she falls deeply in love with a young woman named Mary. But protecting the tender enchantment of their life together becomes Stefan's deepest, most painful challenge. Um, yeah, that sounds very, very exciting. And um, it's a book that I've heard a lot of great things about. Um, and I've been meaning to read. It's been on my shelves for such a long time, but it is quite a lengthy book and it's just giving me big book fear. Um, but yes, definitely one that I'll get to at some point in my life. Next up is The Stonewall Reader, um, forwarded by Edmund White, which I didn't know about. Um, and again, this is just a book that I picked up a long time ago and um, Obviously, I know contextually what it contains, but I don't actually know where else it um, explores. Um, so it says, Drawing from the New York Public Library's archives, the Stonewall Reader represents a collection of first accounts, diaries, periodic literature, and articles from LGBTQ plus magazines and newspapers chronicling the years leading up to the... Sorry, leading up to and the years following the Stonewall Uprising, the most significant event in history of the gay liberation movement. Um, so yeah, really, really fantastic. I've also heard really great things about this. And I think I remember someone saying or mentioning that it um, shines light on a lot of really important queer literature as well, which I'm really excited to learn more about. Next up is um, Homie by Danez Smith. I read Danez's... Danez... I read Danez... Wow, why can't I say his name? I am saying it right. Danez Smith's... Um, <laughs> God, that was a mess. I read his uh, last collection called Do Not, Don't Call Us Dead, I think it was called, um, and loved that collection so much. Um, and in fact, that would have been on my recommended list, but I've lent it out to a friend who still has it. Um, but yeah, this is just more queer black poetry from Daniel Smith, and I'm so excited about reading more of his poetry. Um, in fact, I think I'll get to that one very soon. Next up is some non-fiction, and that is Growing Up Queer in Australia, um, edited by Benjamin Law. This is what it says on the tin. Um, it's just non-fiction, and it's um, from a quite an extensive collection of authors all about growing up queer in Australia. Um, so that is that, and I have been meaning to read this one again for a very long time, um, because it's very relevant to me. So why haven't I? <laughs> right, so next up is a new two new acquisitions actually, and um, an author who I'm newly um, becoming very interested in, um, and that is Hervé Guibert, and this one is to the friend who did not save my life, and this one is translated by Linda Coverdale, um, and I believe that this is a retelling or a fictionalised account of um, Hervé's friendship with Michel Foucault, um, and it um, contains a lot of uh, ideas around AIDS, the AIDS crisis, and um, homosexuality, and repression. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a me book, and I'm very excited to read it. And in fact, I've heard mixed view reviews on that one, um, but I'm very confident that I'm going to like it still. Next up is another one by him, written in Invisible Ink, Selective Stories, and this, like it says in the front, is just... Um, Stories by Hervé Kiber. Um, yeah, I am really excited to... Maybe I'll actually start with this one. Um, I also have a Ghost Image on my shelves, which is his um, uh, philosophies and ideas and expressions around uh, photography, um, who I found... Oh, sorry, which I found out about um, by Matthew, uh, Matthew Schrapper. Um, he highly 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 praise that book and ever since i've been really really excited to read it but um yeah haven't yet but yeah this is all about queerness i think um and i'm very very excited to read it oh my god stop saying you're excited to read it <laughs> next up is um young mungo by douglas stewart i recently talked about this in my um 
wrap up, not because I've read it obviously, but um, because I was saying that I'm so excited that an author, after years of praying for an author to write something similar next after his book that everyone has loved, they have finally done that. <laughs> um, it does sound quite similar in themes and ideas um, and cultural elements. Um, this is a, another book around that surrounds queerness and set in Glasgow and that um, has a lot about the Catholic versus the Protestant churches um, and being queer in a place where you're not allowed to be queer, basically. Um, so yeah, very excited about this one. This one I've, um, I'm putting off one because I have only just read Sugar Bean and I don't want to be finished with Douglas Stewart's books yet. Um, even though I'm sure he's due to release another one next year or something. Um, but also because, uh, yeah, it's the hype around it at the moment that's making me really excited about it. And I just want that excitement to die down just so I go in with a level uh, a more level expectation that doesn't make sense more leveled out expectation next up which is another book that has um installed in me big book fear is at swim two boys by jamie o'neill this i've been so excited to read for so long um it's about i think just two boys in dublin um who meet and form a relationship um and yeah, that's all I really need to know about it. It's something that I've just been so excited to read. Um, I just saw that it's introduced by John Boyne. That's interesting. Um, that's an introduction that I will skip. Um, but yeah, very, very excited to read um, Jamie O'Neill. Um, I don't know if Jamie O'Neill has released any other books. This is the only one that I know about, but very excited to get into them regardless. All right, so next up on the list is Sarah Waters' The Fingersmith. Sorry, it's just Fingersmith. And this is, I think, um, it contains a lot of um, ideas around feminism and lesbian relationships. And um, I've been meaning to read Sarah Waters for the longest time, and I've been so excited about it, um, and I've only ever heard amazing things about all of her novels. Um, but this one is about a young girl named Sue Trinder, who is an orphan who um, is growing up in an orphanage and um, is involved with a lot of people that um, steal for a living. Um, hence Fingersmith, they call themselves the Fingersmiths, I think. Um, and yeah, it just sounds like the perfect one to read to me. But what's really exciting, <laughs> um, and I wouldn't have known unless I grabbed this off my shelf just then, I picked this up from an op shop um, and I think I paid like $4 or something for it. Um, and I've just realized that it is a signed copy and it's not dedicated to anyone. It's just signed. Um, so I was really, really excited to discover that. I didn't even know. I just saw the book and grabbed it. Um, and it's been on my shelf for a very long time. So yes, excited for that one in two ways now. Please forgive all the cuts in this video. Um, I like to try and do these all in one take. Um, but I've just been having to clear my throat a lot and drink a lot of water in between talking. Um, but anyway, I've got the last book ready to talk about, so that is The Transgender Issue by Sean Fay, An Argument for Justice. And I've just heard this described as a really accessible um, exploration on what it means to be transgender um, and uh, transgender from the perspective of transgender people and the ways in which they think. Um, and I've heard it described as something that is... Um, really written to be accessible for the people that tend to have something against um, people doing what they want with their bodies um, and being com and so as to be comfortable with who they are. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to read that. Um, not that I need to be educated in order to support transgender people, because I, of course I already do, but um, I could always be more educated in the ways in which they think and um, experience life as transgender people. Um, so yeah, really, really excited about that one. And um, it's something that I want to get to soon because I'm lacking in the nonfiction department, um, whether that's queerness or just normal nonfiction. Um, sorry, I don't know why I used the word normal then. That wasn't very <laughs> uh, appropriate. Um, just general nonfiction is what I should have said. Anyway, 
Yes, I'll get to that one hopefully very soon as well. I think I've said that about every single one of these books, which of course is not true because I cannot get to all of them very, very soon. But um, just know that when I read them, you'll hear about them here. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have anything or anything to say, any ideas um, or opinions about what I've talked about here, please talk to me down below. <laughs> I feel like I'm begging at this point, but I really, really appreciate conversation um, and talking to you about books in the comments. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this if I was talking to no one. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying your Pride Month and your Pride Month reading lists. Um, please talk to me again about what you're reading. Um, and until... I always go to say until next time, I'll see you next time, but that's the most inaccurate sentence I've ever heard. Um, until next time, I hope you are well, and I'll see you very soon. <laughs> see you guys.